fear. I want to invite those who have not had an opportunity for a party view to come. If you have not had that privilege of a party view, let me invite you to come. And uh, if you have that opportunity, let me ask that you remain seated as our friends here of Gabriel help us with the family who will have a, a final goodbye until the trumpet sounds. I do want to ask you to pray for this family. Our hearts this morning are with them with this season of sadness and celebration. And uh, it is my firm and fundamental belief that the same God who kept us during times of sadness and sorrow will do likewise for this family today. For those who are Christians present, our hearts make room for matters like this. Let's us know that we will be born of the one that death will surely find us. Death is not some threat, it's a promise, it's a, it's a guarantee. Today we celebrate the passing of Mount Gordon. The scriptures tell us that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So today we are grateful for that which is absent and present. Absent from us, present with Him. And so we say good night, Mother Lord. Thank you for the faith you lived, for the family that you wore, for the friends that you encountered, even for the forgiveness that you accepted by God is good. Thank you for the faith that you shared. Even now, for moments of finality that now rests with us. As we begin today's celebration of her life, the family has thought enough of us and this celebration to print their wishes on paper. And so we are careful and cautious to follow these so that we can help them with their wishes. Having said that, uh, Pastor Dwayne Harris from the Live Oak Church. Come on, come on, so Pastor Harris is here. Uh, Pastor Harris is here. He'll come. We'll have our Old Testament scripture lesson and New Testament scripture lesson from our own Reverend Jack. And I did see Reverend Gary Presence. He'll come and share those. So grateful that Mr. Valerie Jolivet is here. Uh, one of our great psalmists and great members of the church. She'll come and share with us. Mama Garden's son. I'm honored that he's here today. I want to publicly thank him for being such a magnificent son to this wonderful matriarch. He'll come and have reflections. Uh, Pastor Harris will come again and share with us resolutions and reading of the obituary. Should there be one today who has a resolution presence? Um, and uh, it's on your person. I surely would like for you to bring it forth. We will only be reading one resolution today. But uh, if you have one on the school, one on the class, or on any other civic or social entity, you can bring that for us now. And then we will hear a selection from Reverend Dorsey, my friend and my brother. And after that, we will turn our attention to the pages of Holy Writ to declare for us the unsearchable riches of our God. It is ours to always begin every celebration of worship with a hand clap of praise for the God that we love.
protection, your healing, and your saving power. And Father, we come thank you because every perfect gift comes from you. We thank you for Jesus, the one that made it possible that we could come before your presence. We thank you for what he has done and the debt he paid on the hill called Calvary. Thank you that he defeated death because the grave could not hold. We thank you that you raised him with all power in his hand. And then, Father, we thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. And now, Father, we thank you for this life that you have allowed us to be a part of and that you have allowed to be a part of our lives. We thank you for Sister George Cheney, Lord. Father, we thank you for her, her faithfulness. Thank you for her witness, her testimony, the most of all the life that she lived before your people. Father, touch her children, touch her family, all that's here. Father, I pray that you would lift them up on every human inside. And Father, as we celebrate this life, we ask now that you would strengthen your vessel, the man of God that's going to declare your uncompromising gospel. And on him, Master, like only you can from the top of his head to the soul of his head. Father, fill the boy in hearts that only you can feel. And fill them with the memories and the precious love and time that Sister Garden shared with us. We'll be so careful just to say thank you, Father, but we realize that one day, we too must meet all of time. Let the life that she lived before us forever be in our memories. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is found in the book of Psalms, beginning of the first verse of Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he had heard my voice and my supplications. Because he had inclined his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon him. As long as I live. The sorrows of death compass me, and the pains of hell get hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. Our New Testament reading found in the familiar text, the first Thessalonians. <clears throat> Chapter 4, 1 Thessalonians, beginning in verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have a hope. For if you believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. To meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be 
with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So that's our reading. Good morning. Good morning. I send all praise to God, this King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You know, to my beloved pastor, to the Lord of family, to the Bride of Christ, the family of God. Amen. 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 You called me the other night and asked us to share Brother Gordon's favorite song. I said, I'd be more than honored. She left such a legacy that she was part of my spiritual love so I know she's looking down and we see her again. We pray, pray the song be a blessing to you. I may not know there are some ways since I can go, but I am sure. Oh, this morning. 
But I stand here to tell you, man, we choose to worship. Praise the Lord. Both sides of the family are here. There are a lot of Florence here. There's a lot of Chinese here. And we choose as one united family again yeah. to worship, to not pout, to not complain, but to give God glory for the things he has done. Andrew morning. Glory be to God for all the great and wonderful things that he has done, that he is doing, that he will do to this family. To my good friend and beloved brother, Dr. John R. Adolph. To all you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Obituary reading. George Cheney Gordon was born on May 21st, 1935, in London, Louisiana, to George Cheney Mills. In two weeks, she was brought to Jennings, Louisiana, where she was adopted and raised by her beloved parents, Dr. George C. Cheney and Effie Cheney. She accepted Christ at an early age at Union Baptist Church, where she faithfully attended and served until moving to Texas. While being reared in Jennings, she attended Jennings Public Schools and ultimately graduated from Brown State University with a Bachelor of Science in Education. She was a teacher for many years in both Louisiana and Texas, particularly she taught in Jennings, Louisiana, Crowley, Louisiana, and in both Port Arthur and Beaumont, Texas, where she taught and volunteered as a grandmother in her latter years. She met and later married Ronald Gordon of Florida, Texas, and relocated to Florida in the mid-60s. She remained married to Ronald Gus Gordon for almost 20 years and remained friends with Ronald until his death in July of 2020. George leads to more than two sons, Terrence R. Cheney of Dallas, Texas, and Minister Calvin Wayne Gordon of Fort Worth, Texas. Matthew Virgil Felicia Maddox of Houston, Texas, Stephen Maddox of Stephen Maddox of Lamar, Texas, and me Cynthia Maddox of Lamar, Texas. She is preceded in death by her loving parents, Dr. G. C. Cheney and Hector Cheney of James Louisiana. A biological mother, George Cheney Mill of Galveston, Texas. Her brother. Prince Albert Mills, George Mills, Uncle T, and her sister, Mildred Mills Maddox, all of Galveston, Texas. Her niece, Cherie Maddox, Cleveland, and her nephew, Kevin Sheba Maddox, both of Houston, Texas. She also leads to cherish her memory, many loved and devoted nieces and nephews on the garden side of the family, and many great nieces and nephews, cousins, friends, and co-workers whom she loved dearly. George also leads to mourn one guard or uh, guard guard, Morella Petrie of Austin, Texas. Very special cousins, Mr. and Mrs. Arnell Petrie of Austin, Texas. Special cousin who is more like a daughter, uh, Jackson Darcy of Houston, Texas, and very special friends who also has been like a daughter, Miss Esther East Leroy of Port Arthur, Texas. George was also very close to her pastor and wife, Dr. John Adolph and Lady Glory Adolph. And she made many close friends at Antioch Baptist Church of Omaha, Texas, who faithfully stuffed with mom through her entire illness. She also left behind a deep connection to Union Baptist Church of James, Louisiana, where she grew up and remained connected at, as best she could. George was a tremendous soprano, a great teacher, a devoted mother and wife, a great cook, and a very clean and awesome housekeeper who was known for her homemade desserts 
and cooking. Amen. Amen. Especially her peach cob. She was a great encourager to young people and anyone that she met. And she fed anyone, amen, amen. who showed up at her door. She loved singing in the hymn of choir at Antioch and did so faithfully until her health failed. She lived well, suffered well, and died well. She left a legacy of true love and concern for others and a deep faith in God and a real commitment to her church and its progress. Amen. Amen. Resolution Antioch Missionary Baptist Church, 3920 West Park, the Drive, Beaumont, Texas, 777 305. Dr. John R. Adolph, pastor to the family of Mother Joyce Gordon. When my work on earth is done in the setting of the sun, I am going to my home over there. I will walk the gold stand and be free from every call. I'll be happy in my home over there. So when I reach my journey in, my journey's in, and I bid farewell to mankind, I will seek eternal rest from all care. You can look for me to go to that other golden shore. And when my weary soul must go to the land with neither burdens or care, far beyond the stars above, where I dwell in peace and love, I will see his face so fair and a fairy crown I'll wear in my home over there. I'll bless the heart that plant. I'll not rest until I see Jesus and he takes me by the hand. And all who have won this race will be there to join in that chorus as we all shall behold his place. Whereas I was young and now I am old. Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging bread. So teach us, dear Lord, to number our days, that we may get a heart of wisdom. Psalms 90 and 12. For they who wait on the Lord, for the Lord, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and faint not, Isaiah 40 and 31. Thus we come in thank you to celebrate the home born of Mother Joyce Gordon. Be it resolved, especially Brother Terrence Gordon and Reverend Calvin W. Gordon, and the extend its sincere sympathy. And we are firmly pray for each of you during this celebration of fellowship, healing, kinship, and victory through Jesus Christ. Always prepare your minds for actions. Be self-controlled. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. As obedient children, do not confirm to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be Holy in all of you doing. All of you doing. First Peter 1, uh, 13 to 15. Remember, only what you do for Christ and in Christ will last. May God continue to bless and keep you and strengthen your faith and trust in Him. Finally, be it resolved that this resolution is given to the family of Mother. George Gordon and a copy maintained in the church record, perfectly submitted by the order of the Antioch Missionary Baptist Church, 3920 West Baltimore Drive, Beaumont, Texas, 77705, on this second day of January 2021. 
Dr. John R. Adolf at the Sue Cooper Church Club.
so very much. And then we have the spiritual encouraging of one of our pastors at the church, Reverend Jack Gay, and then Sister Val, who was just one of our clergy, uh, Deacon Barrett. In fact, I'll get in trouble. How many of y'all stand up? Sound of God. All right. <laughs> Brother Terrence, we wish you so much, man. But just to see these two sons on this front row, knowing what it's like to say farewell to my own mom, have faith that ought to encourage us all. But today I'd like for us to encourage them. Will you help me encourage these two hands? Oh, <laughs> Pastor Harris, who has done just a splendid job today, and to the Lord, and just just blesses us every time that it is. And to all of you, my friends in the faith, good afternoon. Uh, people often tease me, Pastor Harris. They'll say things like, Reverend, you don't know all those people that go to that church. Y'all, this is what I've told them. I have learned to tell them this. I've told them this. Peter did not know everybody who joined on this. Hey, <laughs> so you're not hurting my feelings by saying, no, uh, truth is, I don't go to my in the church. But I tell you this, you know the ones who want you to know them. <laughs> when Mama Lord joined the church over Sunday morning, 1998, I've only been at y'all two years. And uh, we still set those chairs down and said the door of the church open. Oh, that's how you join. Yeah, that's the Baptist church. You gotta sit the chairs down, you gotta get the doors open. And then you gotta come walking down that you know, uh, we join different ways now, but during that time, that era of our history, that's how you join. And my mother Joe Gordon came down the aisle, uh, she had on a hat and a bad face. <laughs> and uh, she sat down in that chair, she's the only one that stuck out so bad we had these points. When Mother Gordon sat in that seat, she stood up and we asked her for her words. And uh, she said, I just want you to know, Reverend, I'm here and it is my time. She said, I don't believe in going, why I'm going to do some pain. Yeah. And she put a tithe in my hand, shook it, and said, Now what for? And I said, Yes, ma'am. Y'all, she was that kind of woman. She served her God for yeah. And uh, today, I want to thank God for not only her life, but her longevity. She was so close so many times. God spared her. And just for sparing her, I want to say hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Word of wisdom, if your mother is still with you, love her while you have her. That is Do it while you can. Because when moments like this come, it brings finality for us temporarily. Having said that, I like to teach along that line of that temporary separation from Revelation chapter 21. If you would stand in honor of the author of the Word of God, if you're able to do so, I want to whisper sacred supplications to our Savior, and after that, I want to read the sentiments of the text, share with you a sermonic thought, and then I will teach for just a moment. To Help us know that this is not how this story is. Mm -hmm. Answer that. And so, God, today we bow on earth because you are sovereignly seated in heaven. But we bow right now because you are not a president who is resident. You are not a governor hoping to get reelected. You are God. Amen. Besides you, there is none other. Yeah. It's not like we have a choice of deities. There is no other God. So, Lord, we bow as your creation to the creator, saying, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. God, I stand because you have allowed me this privilege of not just talking about you, but speaking on your behalf. So, God, think with my mind. Temper my tongue and talk with it clearly so that this family might find light and encouragement from the pain of the Holy Spirit. Do it for your glory is my petition. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Revelation chapter 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. 
the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe all, wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow, neither cry, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. You may take your seats. I want to use for some honest thought. Heaven is for real. Right. Heaven yeah. is for real. The grass withers, the flower fades, the word of our God shall last and stand forever. Pastor Harris, gone are the days when the Sunday school bell rings and folk rush to church to be taught by the pastors who have in their hearts the great commission of Jesus to know well the frustration of seeing more people in worship than you do in Sunday school. Yeah. It makes you almost feel that preachers are in the entertainment business. Uh -huh. If we don't find ways to entertain people, folk won't listen. I'm grateful to God for my upbringing, for a mama and a daddy who made me go to church, who made me sit through Sunday school. It's because we are now leading towards churches where believers are biblically illiterate. Yes. Where they have Bibles in hand but not much word in their hearts. Yeah. They would rather lean toward preaching just, you got 15 minutes, tell me something about God because I've got to do everything else. Yes. And so those days where we would sit dialogue, get discourse and discovery, over the pages of Holy Writ are nearly gone. Yeah. I stick in there today because in this culture of biblical illiteracy has come now Hollywood and Tinseltown telling Christians what the Bible says. What an interesting parallel this evening. So in order to understand the passion of Christ, we no longer read the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We now lean toward Mel Gibson to show us what it was like. We no longer read the Torah, the Nephilim, and the Kephilim to find out about Noah and Moses. We now just go to the movie theater and let somebody else tell us what the Bible says. Not long ago, while we were free of the pandemic, Reverend Goldman, I made my way to Tinseltown to watch a movie of a seven-year-old boy who died and had an out-of-body experience. His name was Coach Virgo, and I took my children to see it because I would be free of profanity and crazy. I do one thing, get the biggest thing of popcorn they have. I will sit back and watch the silver screen. Reverend, Reverend Lewis Vaughn, as I'm seated there, uh, the movie is interesting and it puts before us the doctrine of eschatology. For those who will love the Lord who study the Bible, you know the Bible contains three realms of time. It has chronos, which we measure, kairos, which you cannot, and the eschatos, the eschaton, which is the hereafter. And so when we got to the dinner table at Cheddar's after the movie, after watching Colton Burpo talk about heaven, it spurred a conversation with my young children who at that time were adolescents. My daughter said, Daddy, was that how it's going to be? And I said, I'm so glad you had the Baptist preacher in me was waiting to emerge. And this is what I told my children at the table. I said, this is how it's going to go down. If you live long enough, you are going to see hair turn white. Skin begin to wither. Bones begin to ache. And footsteps will show don't think that youthfulness you got to have on the lights. God said subtle signs and that stuff is going to wear off. Woo, I need an amen call. Everybody's 55 and older. It does not last forever. I said, 
And so what happens if the Lord allows you to live long enough is you will die. But to be absent from the body is to be present. Somebody did this something. It's to be present with the Lord. And to be present with the Lord means you sleep and not take. I say finally one day God will get tired of the sin that inhabits the earth. And he's going to let Gabriel blow his trumpet. And in that day, the dead in Christ will rise. My son said, Daddy, why do they get up first? I said, because the soul in God's lap will have to be matched with the body that was left on the earth. I said, it won't take you long, though. It's going to happen in a moment. I said, and those of us who are still one unit are just being called up to me. He said, then what happens? Well, we'll stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And it's not going to be judgment there because we were already judged on another year. Far away still that old rugged cross. It was an end of suffering and shame. But I said, it's going to be an award ceremony. But we'll get awards for our service. We'll get lives for different things. I told my children that day when I said, don't get used to wearing your crown. It's not for you to strut around heaven. It's just so you can have something to throw at his feet. Unless he's the only one in glory who is worthy. I said, and after that, there will be the season where the devil will be loosed on earth. But don't panic, it only lasts for a little while. After that, we will watch a millennial reign that will take place. And finally, the saints will come back with Jesus. But this time, he won't be the lamb born in a manger. He will be the lion of the tribe of Judah. He'll have many crowns on his head. And this time, the saints will wear white robes. You realize you don't wear white to fight in. It's because you're not there to fight, you're just there to shout. I didn't know him at that time. John would look up and see heaven coming down out of the sky. The new Jerusalem that we would live in on earth forever and forever and forever. Pastor Gay, my son, said, they didn't show that part of the movie. I said, good, but that's the part we got in the Bible. <laughs> The blessing of today is she's right where she's supposed to be. She's right on time. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. I'm here to declare to you today that it's pain just to put a period where God puts a comma. God is not through just yet. Time is winding up, and I believe in my heart the rapture is not far away. Come here, church. Revelation, the apocalypse is what it's called. It literally means the revealing of what God will have us to do. I want you to understand clearly now, it is impossible to understand Revelation without hand. Because Revelation is a continuation of the book of Daniel. In other words, Sister Betty Ford, Revelation continues where Daniel was told to conclude. Watch this in the book of Daniel, chapter 12. 70 weeks of prophecy are given regarding the people of Israel. 69 weeks unfold, with each week being seven years in length. When God gets ready to reveal everything, he says, Daniel, hold up. I feel so something on my heart. I no longer going to judge people by the law. I will judge them by grace. That way, whosoever will can come. But I'm about to shout by myself. And then I run into the hospital while John, while John is on the Isle of Patmos, the last living apostle in the Aegean Sea. He's in the spirit of the Lord's name. And he hears a voice behind him that sounds like rushing water. He turns around and Sees a resurrected Christ. Can I throw this in the humble eye? Aren't you glad he is not a rotting corpse for the resurrected Christ? He lives, ladies and gentlemen. But John saw something, Reverend Goldman, that was different. He walked Jesus out of home from the cross. So we know John knows what he looks like. But John gets a different 
report this night. He says his skin is like brass. His hair is white like wool. And his eyes are like balls of fire. You gotta ask yourself, why does Jesus look so differently now than he did a few years ago? Can I tell y'all the answer? Yeah. He's been sitting next to his daddy for a while, and all of that glory made him glow a little. Help me, God, my brothers and sisters. Revelation chapter 21, the book is about to come. And John says, I looked up and saw that city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven, are born as a prophet for her husband, and there will be no more death. Y'all are going to be there. There will not be any more sickness or no more pain. All the former things will pass away. Pastor Adolf Black teaches this in like this on a day like today. It is because I believe that heaven is for real. Three good principles that I'm out of your hand. Number one, who gets in the heaven? Uh, uh, it's gonna be good right here. You, you, you better not want to nap on this one. It's gonna be good. You see, all of us have these preconceived, idiosyncratic notions of who gets in. And naturally, if you have a list of who gets in, you gotta leave some hope out. Oh, I believe if there's a heaven, there's a hell. So out of the idea of universalism that says everybody gets in. Uh, I believe, though, ladies and gentlemen, because of Protestantism and Catholics and other stuff, we have these views of heaven that say heaven will be a Baptist heaven, an A or B heaven, a C or B heaven, a QOC heaven. heaven. It will be a cultic heaven, an apostolic heaven. Listen to me, that's dumb, man. There will be but one heaven and one people. And it's those ladies and gentlemen who have been saved by the grace of our God. Come get chapter 21 of Revelation. It ends like this, that you can't get into heaven, watch me, unless your name has been written in the Lamb's book of life. Ladies and gentlemen, John tells us in Revelation 21 that if what you have done on earth does not meet the cross and you confess Jesus, everything you have done are written in the books. But if you are in the Lamb's book of life, nothing that you've done on earth is written in the books because your name is in the book. You see, there are two sets here. There is the book and other books. And I suggest to you the only way to get your name in the book is to come through the Christ, who is the Son of the living God. Notice these definite articles. There is no other way to get in. You don't get in because you don't drink, you don't smoke, you don't drink, you don't drink. But in fact, you need a little sin to make sure you need the same thing. I need somebody else. And when that came, God let that judge them. But 
give us the shout of a new year. Y'all ready? The folk who were in Israel were all that hot eating. There were some liars in Israel, some boys, some adulterers, some backbiters. They were all in Israel. Can I tell you the difference? The children of Israel have been covered. God help me. Long as it is wide and wide as it's tall. 
The Bible says 12,000 for a loan. Ladies and gentlemen, that means one wall will go from here to Chicago O'Hare. And from Chicago O'Hare, across the Canadian border. And from across the Canadian border, back down to Sacramento. You can set up for these potholes if you want to. But I suggest you, ladies and gentlemen, that there's another building being prepared for those who happen to love Jesus. Can I just say anybody love anybody? Hold on, buddy. Uh, if you don't know why the thing is there, you'll abuse what that is supposed to be. My God. I suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, heaven is there for one reason. Listen here. To refill it with what it lost in the beginning. Right. Okay, I'm doing what I teach y'all. I'm going to sit down. This is what I want to do that. Y'all ready? He decided, watch this, Lord, that he wanted somebody to worship him. So the Bible says he created angelic beings, terrific yeah. and salute. And the Bible says he created myriads of them. They had one job assignment. You ready? To look at him and shout glory. In fact, four beasts were created to fly around the throne. One with the face of a man, the other an ox, the other an eagle. And the Bible says that they were covered with eyeballs. They look ugly to us when you think about it, but the truth of the matter is they were covered with eyeballs because God didn't want them to miss anything. And they gave heaven a report of what they saw on the throne. So no matter which direction they were flying, Brother Sanders, they could see God on the throne. And when they were seeing one of they would shout, and that was sound cool. It was a big divine if you can say it. And once my brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us that one particular day, God gave three angels specific assignments. He gave one the angel of the word. His name was Gabriel. That's why anytime you see a talking angel in the Bible, Gabe shows up. He was the one who told Mary she would have a baby. Uh -huh. He was one who told uh, Zachariah, I don't know how old she is. It was because it was Gabriel's job yeah. to make announcements. He gave another one of the signs. His name was Michael. Uh -huh. No, listen to this. I'm trying to talk slow. Michael never speaks to human agency on earth. It's because he is like your cousin that just got out of jail and yeah. don't mind going back. Uh -huh. All Michael does is fight all the time. <laughs> Hold on, Michael, we don't think God had anyone that read the Bible. Michael fought and never lost. Hold on, but then there was one more angel, and he was the angel of worship. His name was Lucy. And the Bible says he was so magnificent that on the day of his birth, Reverend God, God created music. That's why antiquity has it put that, that, that Satan had to be the choir director. No, he's not the choir director. It's just that when Lucifer opened his mouth, it sounded like a Chicago Philharmonic Orchestra. It sounded like an old book of a soul, a pickup of a cornet, a trumpet, a trumpet, a tuba, a baritone, everything. So that when Lucifer said good morning, you can hear worship. The Bible says that God clothed him in all manner of jewels, topaz, emerald, pearl, amethyst, the same jewels that your walls are made out of? That's what he was clothed with so that when glory bounced off of Lucifer, it would fill heaven with a rain. Lucifer got a glimpse of himself one day and got besides himself and decided he was the one that should be worshipped. So, okay, let me go off the field and just say this to God. See, um, God gave him the skill you heard your parents give you if you had good care. And it goes like this. Listen to me. This ain't big enough for both of us. One of y'all got to go. And I ain't the one leaving, so you don't have to get out of here. And the Bible says he exposed Lucifer and a great group of the angelic hosts. Now there are three jobs in heaven, but only two positions of people. Gabriel still has his job. He can still make an announcement. Michael still has his job. He's still doing that. But there is a new position open in heaven, and it's called worship. But hold on, watch what God does. Instead of looking for another angel to take his place, he said, No, I'm going to start all over. He reached down and with a handful of dirt, made 
you and you and you and you and then say, now how do you like me now? You see, my brothers and sisters, heaven is made for one purpose. Those who will say, I will worship God every day and every night. Can I ask, are there any worshipers in your way? I was so glad when the Lord God said they will worship God like that. Because worship is not for people who are not in the mood. How can you look at God and tell God, I'm not in the mood? The reason why you don't have the coronavirus right now is because God's grace is more than the You ought to be filled with the right attitude. And then what you going to look at God and tell him, I don't feel like worshiping, but God felt like holy but God felt like breaking like you up. My brothers and sisters, if you cannot worship here, you will not worship over there. So I think we all have plans. So that when you get a chance to see my heart, we'll be able to dance like right the Lord. If you love the Lord, lift your hands in this place. And tell God, Lord, you are Lord of my worship. You are Lord of my praise. You are Lord to receive the glory, the honor, and the blessing. Hallelujah, God. For those who reject Jesus, that's a place for that. You're welcome. For those who say that, it's a new year. And I can't live without it. I can't make it without it. In fact, I need God more now than I ever have. That's a place for you too. It's called heaven. And I want to stand before you today with every breath you to tell you it is real. She would not come back to <laughs> battle of these conditions. She would simply tell you, I'll wait for you to get to it. In God's presence, there's a peace that's beyond you and us. So today, with a torn heart, one sad because we got to say bye, one glad because we know what she is. We say goodnight to God. Thank you for the life that you live, in, for the God that you pray to, for the songs that you live from your heart, for the meals that you cook, for the lessons that you taught, for the sacrifices that you made, for the sins you commit, for the Savior that you met, for the mercy that you discovered, for the grace that you can tell everybody was truly amazing, for the Bible you read that was true. For the Lord that you serve, that you will rest at his feet. We say in public good night. Rest well. We'll see you when the trumpet sounds. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand. I pray some Gabriel are coming. And as they do, we will make our way to the place of interest. Put one to the face of Israel. So we're grateful for that. We're going to the Bible Cemetery that is in Meaderland, Texas. I would ask for those who are going to make that trip to please turn on your headlights that will let the police escort know that you're going to be traveling in that particular group and will help them move without incident or accident. On behalf of Reverend Gordon, his brother, and his family, I want to thank you all for being present today. Though you may not get a chance to personally meet them, your presence today speaks volumes of your case. In days to come, it wouldn't be bad for you to pick up the phone and call them. After all, it will be the first Mother's Day without mom. Some of y'all know what that means. So call. It's because that's what Christians do with me. 
Pastor Harris, thank you for being present, man. We love you, we respect you, we hold you and hire you. As we stand, my brothers and sisters, to our feet, let's make our hearts ready for the Lord.